Alright, what's going on guys? Got another gold guide video for you today. It's the MP5. Um the MP5 is a great gun. Um just like the L just like all the SMGs, um, they're very similar to the ARs. Uh with the challenges. Um the only difference is you need less amount of kills, headshots, uh reload kills, all all that sort of stuff. Um but yeah, the MP5 in general is a great gun. Uh it's one of my favorite guns in the game. And it was just it was super simple to get it completed. Um, if you guys haven't seen one of my gold guide videos before, I usually break them down into four different parts or four different builds, I should say, not parts. Um, each build will cover specific camo challenges, if that makes sense. So I'll have like a hip fire build, a kills build, a long shot and mounted kills build, and a reload build. I couldn't think of the last one. Sorry for that pause. Um, so like the kills build will help you with just the spray paint category, which is kills, uh, the headshot category, the crouching category, stuff like that. I'm not going to explain each one because I, I go and do the last part of the video, which is camo requirements, which I go over all sorts of stuff. I go over what I was just going over and what maps are best, uh, game modes, the variation of that game mode, all that jazz. But I try and keep these videos as short as I can. I know these videos usually are 12 plus minutes. I think I've even made a 20 minute one. Um, so if you're a Call of Duty veteran, these videos really aren't meant for you. They're meant for the new players that kind of um, just need like some pointers. So, I mean, you might be able to, by all means, go ahead and watch the video. It might help you out some way. I might give you some uh, tips, but uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna mention anything uh, groundbreaking, more or less. So, hopping into the first build, it is the kills build. All right, so here is the kills build. Um, Right off the bat, I'm not using an optic. That might really not sit well with you, but personally, I don't think I'll be able to sh show you. You can kind of get a gist of it. Uh, the MP5 has really good iron sights, in my opinions. So I I love using just the iron sight. Um, but moving on to the actual attachments, I use the FSS close quarter stock. It's gonna help with your ADS speed. Um, I should also note that this MP5 is very. It's an aggressive. It's very. It's built for an aggressive playstyle. Um, very mobile um, play style. I'm not like camping or anything with that. I, with this, I'm running around uh, searching out for the gunfights, more or less. Um, so, a lot of it is going to be built, like I said, for ADS speed and sprint to fire speed, stuff like that. So, that's what, again, what is this? ADS speed is what I'm using. The stock, rear grip, one of my favorite attachments in the game. Um, I'm going to say right now, just in case you don't know, I say it in every video. Play hardcore for your camo challenges. I know if you're a core player, hearing me say play hardcore, you're just like, no, I'm not going to do that. Trust me, I've done this for the past out of three plus Call of Duties um, when I've been going for the final camo, and it is uh, I don't I don't understand why, but it is just so much easier to go to get these things done in hardcore. It is crazy how much better it is. But really, just I know you don't want to, but just play hardcore. Um, but with that in mind, stifled grip tape in general is a great attachment and hardcore it's even better. It's going to help you with your ADS speed and your sprint to fire speed. These two pros are extremely important in hardcore. It's going to allow you to get your gun up and ready uh, before your enemy. Getting that gun up, it's only going to take one or two shots to kill the person. You get yours up before he does, you net that kill 9 out of 10 times. So this attachment is very good. If you don't know the difference between ADS speed and sprint to fire speed, ADS speed is that time from hip firing to aiming down your scope or sight whatever it is so if it's a pro it's going to reduce that time allowing you to get your sight up look down your sight faster um if it's a con it's going to increase that amount of time so it's going to take longer sprint to fire speed is that time from when you're double sprinting or just normal sprinting then say you pull the trigger to shoot it's that time from you sprinting to actually getting that first shout or shout okay first shot out of your gun so, again, if it's a pro, it's going to reduce that time, allowing you to shoot faster. And if it's con, it's going to increase that time, allowing you, or taking longer to shoot. So, again, great attachment. Um, this is an amazing attachment in core. Uh, I use it in hardcore just just because I'm so used to having it. And I'm not sure if, if this makes it a one-shot kill. I don't. At, like, close range, I'm not actually sure about that. Um, but, 10 mil ammo. Um... It, it does reduce the fire rate, still has a fast fire rate, so don't worry about that too much. And aiming recoil 
this gun is still it's still got a very minimal amount of recoil so don't worry about those too much and these two pros i usually say never worry about uh, because they're usually pointless in hardcore and core which i know looks weird because now i'm on they're on my gun but i really it it's really i just really prefer using the 10 mil mags but if you don't want to you can definitely swap it out for like say say you want you really want a sight you could that's definitely something you could swap out um take off the 10 mil you could put on an extended mag or you could put your sight back on so that's really personal preference i just really prefer 10 mil Underbarrel, this is my favorite underbarrel in the game. The Merc Foregrip helps out with your recoil control and your hipfire accuracy. Uh, this build isn't really meant for your hipfire kills. I have an entire build meant for that. Um, but having the Merc Foregrip on it and your 5 milliwatt laser, it's, it is going to have you... It's going to allow you to have very... Actually, I think these are the only two things in the game that reduce your hipfire. So, this is actually going to help you. you. This will allow you to get easy hipfire kills if, if it comes to that. Like, so... I'm just rambling right now, so I'm going to get on to the next one. Just Merc 4 grip, really good. <laughs> the laser, 5 milliwatt, you want to use it over the 1 milliwatt. The 5 milliwatt laser is going to help you, is going to add sprint to fire speed. And also your hip fire accuracy, if you look right here, ultra bright 5 milliwatt green laser greatly improves hip fire. Right here, greatly, that's the key word. 1 milliwatt, 1, doesn't say greatly. 2, doesn't have sprint to fire speed. Um, and as you can see right here, it reduces your hip fire accuracy compared to what I have equipped, which is the 5 milliwatt. The only plus side to the 1 milliwatt... Oh, I need to, like, slow down or something. Uh, the only con to the 5 milliwatt is that it's visible to enemies where the 1 milliwatt is not. So, that's the only downside. If you're finding yourself getting pre-fired around a corner, you can swap to the 1, mi 1 milliwatt. I would highly recommend sticking with the 5 milliwatt. In my opinion, it's, it's definitely worth it. That's actually it for the kills build. And now I will hop on to the hipfire build. That's the next one. All right, here's the hipfire build. Um, it's pretty standard for a hipfire build for me. So one, using 10 milliwatt ammo. You could definitely use extended mags if you wanted to. Um, that's going to give you an extra 15 rounds, which is very good for hipfire. But again, I really prefer the MP5 with the 10 mil. So, uh, but again, don't put on a sight for this either. If you don't want 10 mil, go to 45. I highly recommend 10 mil though. Um, so either usually I tie in sleight of hand with an extended mag, I kind of go over because they kind of they play in together, so I usually explain the two. Although this isn't really an extended mag, it's just a different type of ammo. But I'll just let's just say, for example, using your 45 round mag, uh, this still applies to the 30 round, just I don't know, I don't know what I'm saying at this point. But <laughs> so with your with when you're hip firing, which is what this build is, you're gonna be less accurate because you're not aiming down your sight. So, being less accurate causes you to shoot more. Causing you to shoot more means you're draining your magazine a lot faster. Draining your magazine a lot faster requires you to reload. So, a couple things you could do. To keep it from your, to keep your magazine from dra draining fast like that, you could extend it. Which is usually why I use extended mags. Again, in this case, I'm using 10 mil because I prefer it. But, you could use extended if you wanted to. And usually for all my other guns, I use... I use uh, extended it's just the smgs are a little bit different because you can play with the calibers but so if you're using an extended mag that's why you would be using it um that doesn't apply to me in this case but for side of hand draining your magazines quickly like that is going to cause you constantly to reload because since you have to shoot so much when you're shooting at the next guy you want to have as many bullets available to you as possible in like your magazine so you're constantly reloading side of hand it's gonna reduce that time that you're reloading allowing you to, to have your gun ready more often which basically equals more kills um so, so that's the reason i use extended mags even though right now it's 10 mil that's why i would use extended mags and then that's why i use side of hand so with those two out of the way we have the underbarrel it's the only underbarrel in the game that helps with your hip fire accuracy um, that being the Merc foregrip, and then it also helps with your recoil control, which doesn't matter that much because you're not really aiming. Um, 5 mil a lot, just like I said, um, in the last, last, uh, gun build. Sprint to fire speed, it's great, it's gonna allow you to shoot faster, hardcore, that is an amazing pro. And then also, it helps you with your hipfire accuracy, if you want to know why I'm using the 5 mil a lot over the 1 mil a lot, I kind of just, I explained the whole... Right here it says greatly. If I dive it a quit, boom, one milliwatt, it reduces it. So five milliwatt is it's uh it's better for hip fire. 
The only con is that it is visible to enemies. So you could swap to the one milliwatt. I do not recommend it. I would just say stick out with the five, stick it out with the five milliwatt. And then, really, the all these other attachments are pointless. Optic, you don't you're not you don't need to look down your sight. You're, you're hip firing. You're stock. You're not aiming. You're not aiming. Uh, you're not aiming. And one, you're not aiming. You could use it for movement speed, but there's better things to take. So these two pointless. Rear grip. You could use this for a sprint to fire speed, but it's tied in with aiming, so I don't use this recoil. This is aiming, so I don't use a rear grip. Then the barrel. There is some weird barrels in here. Um, like this one. I don't think there's another barrel in the game at the moment that has like these types of pros. Uh, but I definitely, for me, I just preferred using the monolithic suppressor. Um, it's kind of a weird explanation why. Damage range doesn't necessarily matter because you're playing one, you're playing hardcore, two, you're playing on small maps. Um, the cons don't affect you at all because you're not aiming. So the only pro to using the suppressor is that it's suppressing you, which any of them do, but this one helps out with your damage range, so why not just take an extra pro? But the suppressor... It's just gonna, it's gonna keep you suppressed. So, you're shooting at a guy, you're spraying at him because you can't hit, aim down sight. He can't figure out where you are because you're suppressed. So, that extra second where he's trying to figure out where you are might not do the kill since it's hardcore. It's only gonna take a couple shots to hit him. As long as you can hit him a couple times in that one second that he's trying to find you, then hey, the suppressor did something for you. But, again, it's not this attachment. The fifth attachment for the hip fire build is usually... Um, just to get you to 5 out of 5 attachments so you can get that tiger camo. Uh, you can really swap it out for whatever you want. It's, it's the one attachment on this build that um, that doesn't have like a direct impact on the gun. All these other attachments like are buffing the gun in an, in an extreme way where this suppressor doesn't really. Uh, but moving on to the next build, it is the long shot and mounted build. Alright, so this is a little bit different. One, it's a really weird build. So if you're if you're like an aggressive player and you know what you're doing in Call of Duty, seeing like a thermal sight on a gun, like a like an SMG, is probably weirding you out. But hear me out on this. Um, I feel like I had the mounted and long shots nailed in this game. Um, I have a great method in my opinion, and it allowed me to get them done extremely fast. So uh, I'm not gonna break down the gun just yet. I'm gonna take you in game and I'll show you on Shoot House uh, where the best spot to get um, long shots and mounted kills are. Alright, so as we're loading in here, I just want to explain why I'm going to be using the August set of the MP5. Uh, it really just comes down to me being lazy. Uh, your custom classes for multiplayer aren't the same as private matches, so I don't want to have to go through and make an entire new gun, so I just use the AUG, which is, the AUG is basically equipped the exact same way as the MP5. Alright, so here we are. We're on Shoot House. Um, this applies to this side right here and the side down there whether you're behind that wall so it's exactly the same process so you're on shoe house you want to make sure you have a smoke grenade equipped right here boom bang smoke grenade this is very important before you jump on this wall um if you've played on shoe house before you know there's probably a guy down there sitting on that wall you jump up here he shoots you because you have to go through the animation he, and then in hardcore he's gonna kill you nine out of ten times if he has good aim so what i do to help with that is you just throw a smoke grenade up over the wall give it a sec let it puff up uh, that whole area he, right now he can't see you want to mount your gun to get your mounted kill and as you can see your entire vision through the mid lane is blocked but with a thermal sight and a night vision sight you can see perfectly so he's not going to be able to see you you see him boom he's dead that simple if they're on the wall right here that's a long shot uh on this uh particular side there's actually two spawns at least right here there might be three so if your team is on the left side and like close to um like that area if they're near like the archway over on the left or the arch or if they're in i think it's called like shanty town over on the right it'll force their team to spawn either back there which is back there on this side um it'll force them to spawn back there or right here i've been here i've seen people right here i've seen people pick up insane kill streaks within five seconds right here you just they're just spraying and they get an insane amount of kills because their whole team will be tr be forced to spawn there. Um, sorry, I got a phone call. Um, so that's a long shot right there. Those kills. The guy on the wall is a long shot. If if you kill one guy multiple times, a lot of times what happens is he gets angry at you more or less. 
So he's gonna try and kill you. Um, so he usually, if he's if he's smart enough, he'll, he won't keep peeking the same angle. So a lot of times what they like to do is they like to peek that corner. And this corner right here, this map is very symmetrical. So that corner right there is this corner right here. So if he peeks right there, what he does, instead of jumping up on the box, he runs around, he gets on the corner, he mounts, and then he'll try and shoot you like that. So no matter if you're on this side or the other side, you shoot the guy here or here, both of these are long shots. I mean, if you're right here, shooting him here isn't a long shot, but if he's, if you're there shooting here, it's a long shot. Um, you can also shoot them if they're running towards you. I think it's about like where that grass strip is right here is, uh, is basically where it stops turning in from a long shot to like not a long shot, a close shot. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. Um, so you want to make sure you try and kill them before they get too close to you. And again, if you're on that wall down there and you're looking towards here, it's probably just the middle of this, uh, this like distance right here. It's probably right in the middle where it changes from a long shot to a, like not a long shot. But this spot, it's how I got all of my long shots and all of my mounted kills for Damascus. I got Damascus before Rust came out, so I didn't play on Rust at all. Um, and I played on before Shoe House came out, because Shoe House wasn't always out. Before Shoe House came out, I did this in Ground War. Um, and out of all these different ways that I've done it, this is by far the fastest and quickest way um, to get both of these kills done and completed. Although now shipment, I, I mean, I'll touch it in the last segment segment of the video. Shipment, you get shipment and you're going for hip fire kills. I just realized, I don't know what I'm talking about. Now I'm talking about long shots. I'm going to stop talking. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is the most effective for long shots and mounted kills. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to now jump into the gunsmith and I'll break down the attachments for you guys. All right. So here we go. Here's the MP5 uh, long shot build. I just showed you how to use it in game. Although it's the AUG, it applies to the same. It applies to the uh, same. So you want to use a thermal sight or a night vision sight. The thermal sights are usually the last two sights you unlock. In this case, there you unlock a thermal sight kind of earlier. Uh, but usually thermals are the last two. So if you if that's the case, I think actually it's the case here. Yeah. So right here you unlock the night vision sight. You can see it's, you're going to unlock the night vision sight a lot earlier than you're going to unlock a thermal. Um, 9 out of 10 times. Not 9 out of 10 times. 99% of the time, I use the night vision sight over the thermal sight because I hop into customize and I go to splinter. Right here you can see these are the long shot challenges. You unlock the splinter camo category very early on um, where you unlock the sights, the thermal sights later on. So most of the time I had night vision unlocked when I got to the long shot camos. So I was usually using night vision. It's a little bit harder. It'll still work fine. You'll still be able to th see through the smoke unless they patched it at some point and you're watching this video like a year from when it was uploaded. Um, I don't think they will. But uh, even if they have cold blooded on, night vision will pick them up no problem. You'll see them through the smoke and everything. Uh, and it's it's what I use most of the time. It'll work. It'll work fine. Um, Moving on to the next attachment, stock. I used the classic straight line stock. Um, you're going for aiming stability. I, di I didn't actually showcase it in that video of me um, showing. Oh my god, I'm losing my train of thought. I didn't actually show the aiming stability of the crosshair when I was showing you on Shoe House, uh, which I usually do. But if you go back and you watch the video, you'll actually see how steady the crosshair is. It basically doesn't move at all. And that's because of all these aiming stability attachments I have. Again, I know it's the MP5. I showed you the NOG. But this gun is basically built exactly the same. So, you're going to use that stock for aiming stability. Rear grip. Rubberized grip tape. going to help with your recoil control. Uh, because aiming... Okay. That's wrong. You want to use granulated grip tape. Sorry. I, I knew that seemed weird. I don't think I've ever said rubberized grip tape in a video. Granulated grip tape. going to help you with the aiming stability. Keep that crosshair as stable as possible. Aiming, walking, steadiness. doesn't really matter because you're not walking. I clicked too many times. Gun, ammo. You would usually use... I think I usually have people use extended mags. But actually here it kind of does matter. Not too much. Um, that it's 10 mil. Because your damage and range is increased. But you're hardcore. So it doesn't matter like too much. But again, I just prefer 10 mil. I've explained it in all the other builds. Um, and then your underbarrel. You want to use the Ranger foregrip. Um, I actually just realized this last when I was recording last video, which for me was 10 minutes ago. For you, it was probably a couple days. Um, so I just realized this 10 minutes ago, my time. <laughs> um, 
but I realized it in the last video, if you guys saw that, I think, which was the P90. Uh, Ranger Foregrip actually helps with your aiming stability. I've been telling you guys to use the Merc Foregrip because, right here, recoil control. But I never realized that the Ranger Foregrip helps with recoil control and aiming stability as well. Both of these are what you're going for, um, for this build. So, use the Ranger Foregrip. It's going to keep your crosshair stable, and it's going to help with your recoil control. Where the Merc Foregrip is going to help with your recoil and hip fire, but you're not hip firing. You're, you're hard scoping down mid lane. So, Merc, or not Merc Foregrip. Uh, I'm just so, I'm so used to saying Merc Foregrip. Uh, Ranger Foregrip is definitely better in this case. Um, and that's actually all the attachments. I didn't realize it. But yeah, that's all, that's it for the long shot build and mounted build. Uh, the next build is the reload. Actually, I can just take you there right now. So the reload build is, boom. It's the kills build. The only thing is you're just going to replace an attachment. So whether you have an attachment that you don't like that I put on this gun, you could swap it. So say you don't like the 10 mil ammo, you could swap out um, the 10 mil for a sleight of hand. But me personally, I would swap out the laser. Just because I don't want people always seeing like where I'm aiming. So just swap it out right there and boom, that's this would be the kills build. Um, sleight of hand is extremely important. That's why I swap it out just because... It's going to help you. Like, what I do, I spawn, I shoot once. Depending on what map. If it's shoot house, I reload instantly. You can get reload because you'll see somebody within, like, a millisecond on shipment. Uh, but if it's a shoot house, I shoot once, and then I find... I run up to a corner that I know somebody's going to be behind. Once I get to the corner, I reload, then peek and kill them. Uh, so, just, you got to play it play it by whatever map you're on. But having sleight of hands can allow you to reload faster. Um, just makes that whole process easier. Nope. So, that's it for all the builds. Now I'm going to hop into the camo requirement part of the video. And I'll take you through what game mode's best. What uh, variation of the game mode. Whether it's hardcore or core. Uh, spoiler. It's all going to be hardcore. Unless it's ground war. Um, and any other tips and tricks that I have for you guys. Um, so I'll hop into that right now. Alright. So now we're into the camo requirement part of the video. Where I'm just going to go over all the different camo categories. Uh, what you need to do to unlock all the camos within that category um and then i'll give you what maps are the best um the one that i found best to get the uh challenges done uh what variant of the game mode whether it's um hardcore or core and then what weapon build uh is like best for that uh challenge so starting off with the first one you have spray paint you need to get 500 just normal kills um the maps are just shoe house shipment and rust they're uh the smallest maps uh are going to be the easiest to get the most amount of kills on um, running into the most fights so a lot of these uh challenges will all have the same three maps um and if, if you watch this video like months down the line and there's more maps out like there's like when i did damascus when i was grinding for damascus i shipment was uh just coming out uh shoot house was out for a little bit but rust wasn't even out so like as time goes on more maps will be released and then hopefully smaller maps will come out that way It'll be easier for you guys. But uh, for the spray paint, the best build is going to be the kills build. Um, it's just a bit the best build that is like good overall. So that's the build that works the best. Uh, for Woodland, you're going to need 100 headshots. The maps, again, true house, shipment, and rust. Um, play hardcore, and then, again, the kills build. Digital, you need 110 crouching kills. Uh, same thing, same three maps. True house, shipment, and rust. Play hardcore once again. And then also the kills build. For the crouching kills... Um, if, like, if you get this on shipment, you can get it done in, like, what, three games or two games? It's insane. Uh, what I would do is I just spawned. As soon as I spawn, I would just crouch. That way, every kill I got, I mean, it's kind of, kind of obvious, but you just crouch as soon as you spawn, and then you just stay crouched the entire time. This shipment is such a small map that even if you're not moving that much because you're crouching, you're still going to get a lot of kills just by crouching and not moving that much. Um, then for Dragon, you need 100 and you just need 100 hip fire kills. Again, same three maps. Shipment, Shoot House, and Rust. Uh, again, once again, Hardcore. Um, this this is like the first spot where Hardcore is like super beneficial. I mean, don't get me wrong. For kills and uh, crouching kills, it's pretty beneficial. For headshots, I think it's extremely beneficial because it's only a one hit, one hit headshot kill. Uh, but then also for hip fire kills, only having to hit the guy once or twice while you're just spraying at him hip firing is uh, just extremely useful. But again, Shoot, shoot House, Shipment, and Rust. Uh, hardcore, like I said. And then you want to use either the hipfire build or depending on what um 
what the kills build has on it. If it's got the five milliwatt laser, the Mark IV grip, it'll be you'll. It's basically the a hip fire build gun if it's got the five milliwatt laser and the Mark IV grip on it. Um, so you can pick up your hip fire kills with that as well. For Splinter, you need 50 long shots. If you guys are just just skipping to this part of the video from the timestamps below, uh, and you kind of want like an idea or a tip on how to get your long shot kills pretty easily, definitely go back and watch um, the long shot slash mounted killed build in this video. I take you guys through exactly the type of play style that I use to get all my long shot mounted kills. And in my opinion, it's it's very effective. Uh, I like I just said, I got all my guns, um, all their long shot and mounted kills done that way. Uh, so for the maps you want to play shoot house more specifically because that gun was built specifically for um, that map and that play style. Uh, but also rust, uh, I haven't actually gone for a gold gun, uh, getting long shots on rust yet. Um, with th these new DLC guns, I'm starting to play rust. Uh, but actually when I went through and in my Damascus, Russ wasn't out. But there is a couple spots that I've seen on Russ where you can get long shots. Again, you want to play hardcore, and the weapon build is, of course, the long shot build. So, the next one is topography or topo, topo. Um, you need 50 mounted kills. Um, you can get your mounted kills on either shoe house with the long shot build. So, like, you go, I usually would wait for the this topography camo category to be unlocked before I went for my long shot kills because you can get your long shot kills and your mounted kills you can pick them up at the same time um so you could play shoe house like using that same exact play style I just mentioned for the long shot build shipment uh, extremely easy map to get your mounted kills you just mount like on anything as soon as you spawn you're gonna see tons of people um that's an extremely easy way to get it done and then rust it's kind of like shoe house it's not as small as shipment um, but there's definitely some good spots that you can just mount your gun and pick up a lot of kills. Again, you want to play hardcore, and then you can either use the long shot build if you're going with that spl uh, play style for splinter, with that, like, sitting on the wall with the thermal sight, or you can just use the kills build if you're playing on, like, shipment or rust. For tiger, you just need to get 250 kills with max attachments. I think this is actually the one camo category for SMGs that you have to get more kills with. Um, then assault rifles. I think assault rifles is 180. For SMGs, you only you will you need more at 250. Uh, the maps, just uh, any small map again. So shoot out shipment and rust. Um, you want to play hardcore, and then you can just use any build. All the builds that are featured in this video all have max attachments, so you can specific uh so you so you can get your tiger camo unlocked. And then stripes, 40 reload kills, shoot out shipment and rust. Again, small map. You need to run into the most people. Play hardcore, and then you want to use the reload build. Uh, the stripes actually if it used to be a lot harder to get your stripe uh, camo kills, those reload kills, but they, I mean, it's been, like, after a month of the game being out, they reduced, or they increased the amount of time you needed, or the amount of time that was given to you to get a reload killed. Um, so it's a lot easier to get your reload kills now, so you don't specifically need a reload build. You might actually find yourself getting your uh, reload kill challenges done just by playing the game, going for other challenges. So that's kind of nice. Uh, for the reptile camo category, you need 75 kills with no attachments. Again, you just want to play on those small maps, so shoot out shipment and rust. Hardcore, and then no weapon build because you need to use a bare bones gun. For skulls, you need 25 three kill streaks. Um, this is kind of kind of weird. So I for the maps I just said shoot out shipment and rust, just because you're gonna run into the most people that way. Same exact thing as all the other camo categories. You run into the most people, you're gonna run into the most fights, so you're gonna have the most opportunity to run into a three kill streak. Now, I understand that all of you might not be the world's best Call of Duty player, so having to get a 3 kill streak on these small maps might be harder for you. If that's the case, um, just take any of the builds, really, uh, and just hop into Ground War. Ground War is extremely easy to get your 3 kill streaks because it's such a big map. There's so many people, um, and you can just camp real quick and just... Call of Duty, there's not a lot of recoil on your guns, so you can shoot people and kill them pretty easily across, like, long distances so if you're having trouble on these smaller maps i would definitely if you're if you're if you're like an average player definitely i would definitely recommend playing on true house shipment and rust just because like i said you're gonna run into the most fights you're gonna have the most chances to get your three kill streaks um but if you're maybe uh a little bit below average or you're just struggling hop into ground war i definitely did it for some of the for some of the guns um whenever i was getting smacked around on those small maps it just makes it a little bit easier for you so again Play shoe shipment and rust, but you're getting smacked around a little bit. Just hop into ground war. And then, if you're playing those three small maps, just play whatever version of uh, the map is in hardcore. And then, 
I would recommend using the kills build right off the bat, but if you play Ground War, you can kind of just screw around with other builds and see what works best for you. Uh, but that's it, guys. That's all the camo categories. That's all the challenges. Um, so that's actually be it for this video. If you guys liked the video, drop it a like. If you didn't, there's a button there for that as well. Um, I always feel weird asking for people to subscribe, so I put in this little clip of Jev um, at the end here explaining that whole thing. Uh, but that's going to be it for this video, guys. Um, have a good day. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. That is such a lame. He used to mock people for asking for subscribers, and now that's all he does. It's like, dude, the analytics between a video where you tell somebody... Uh, just simply just adding hey can you subscribe versus not it's actually insane it's literally a friendly reminder that you can subscribe i ain't begging for shit i got enough but if you want to subscribe i appreciate it <laughs>